Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Mech Merlin build stream. Let's see who's online. Show you sugar. Sakuya, Joda Uncode, who else is here? I'm not Bree and Maki. Thanks guys for joining in. Today we have another customer build. If you remember was it this past Tuesday, yes, it was this past Tuesday, we unboxed the Sunsetter R1, which is a 65% keyboard with left side macro key. So it did have a somewhat unusual layout and some controversial design, but you know, um, hopefully R2 looks much better. Enough about that. Let's talk about the Sunsetter. <laughs> so yeah, once again, the controversial design here. As you guys can see, I've already put on some stabilizers. Well, build should be somewhat quick today. Considering stabilizers take about like, what? 20 to 30 minutes of, of the time. I've also lubricated all of the switches. Coincidentally, the customer did not send me enough films, so I've been told to put the unfilmed switches on his macro keys, which are the two left columns over here. Board came with a shiny, shiny brass plate, along with a dampening pad of sorts right there. Um, I did notice, I did notice that the plate, that the switch cutouts are all switch top removable. So in the future, if the customer so wills it, they can actually replace the unfilmed switches with, with film very easily. Yeah, this is indeed a gasket mount board. Here, let me actually move the keyboard out of the way. I've been noticing that because of the tight angle that I have, I mean, I'm going to have to grab like another lens in the future. But because of the tight angle that I have, I can't really, I don't really have much space once I go larger than a 60. 75 is a bit thick right now, so we'll see. I'll put this away for the time being. Pull it back up when, when needed. All right, let's just test out really quick if I got my stabs correct. There we go. Let's see. Got those. And check it out. Echo is so like it's it's so generic that it even comes on a non-branded case. Like this one's called Gleeging, a third party. Need that shift key. Like I do notice with Echo caps, very little warpage, which which is one reason why I wanted to check them out. Heard some good stuff about them. I'm going to solder in the caps first, I mean, sorry, the uh, stabilized keys first. Just to hold everything in place. Yeah, here, let me show you guys the rest of the key set. See? Not, nothing to write home about, just your typical white on black set. White on black and cheap. Like, I'm a big fan of GMK, but when it comes to simpler colors, such as white on black, black on white, I'm like, doesn't really matter. I'm perfectly fine with going with something cheaper. All right. All right, let's see, did I miss any switches doesn't look like it so far but the best way to tell is to actually plug it in and Bessa says man I really want to go there to the Philippines yeah you should definitely go it's a very beautiful country beautiful country and you know if you're if you oh oh god look at that well, I know the board works, because I can type on it. I'm just trying to load up Via here. Yeah, so just, just keep in mind, like, being in the Philippines, if you're from America, the exchange rate and the standard of living is so different that, you know, you can... I I remember earning minimum wage here in the United States. I was earning, like... 7.15 an hour, right? And going to the Philippines and still being able to buy whatever I wanted. 
you know so yeah just um keep that in mind here let's go let's go test 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 go test this out let's see is this the layout i want yes that is the layout that i want let's do test matrix here we go Oh, so um, speaking of Via, I discovered something yesterday that I didn't know about Via. Apparently, some boards in Via actually support the encoder knob. And that's fully configurable on Via and all that. And I've been trying to figure out how it's done, but I suspect you still need to tweak something within Via itself. So it will require a little more experimentation on my end. 99 or 91 um this particular one is 99 but i've used anywhere from you know 70 80 all that stuff just don't use water guys <laughs> just don't use water XAP being the VIA replacement. Oh, I've never even heard of XAP. I've heard of Vile. I've never heard of XAP. XAP sounds like a ticker symbol. Hey, 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 man, did you uh, did you uh, buy buy shares of XAP yet? <laughs> Zap. Oh, because you zap your board, which could be bad. <laughs> Scheduled release soon for Via. Yeah, I talk with Olivia every now and then. So I, I know she's been pretty busy lately. Yeah, every now and then Olivia sends me um stuff about Via. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know how much I can actually say being on stream. <laughs> I've been active in the collaborator Discord. Yeah, I've been really busy. Like before, okay. So when I first joined QMK, I was a I was just a dev and then over time I got promoted to manager and you know now I don't have much time to to code all I do is a bunch of management <laughs> so zap don't zap your board though that could be a very bad thing XAP. What? Okay. Does XAP actually stand for anything or 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 is it just like a you know, cuz it's cool. You know what I mean? Extensible application protocol. Ah. I see. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's let's put gaskets on. Drachna has big sur on it. Oh yeah. People can define new stuff as part of their keyboard and Zap will pick up 
Nice. That sounds really awesome. Okay. Let's see. Here. So one cool thing about the Sunsetter is that Sunsetter also provided a manual here. Here, let me just clean up a bit. I don't really need my soldering iron anymore, so let's turn that off. Let's turn off the fan. There we go. Those are tiny gaskets. I agree with you. Here. Let's see. Step three, solder switches. Step four. Yep, yep, yep. Step five. Step six. Attach gasket tabs to top and bottom cases. Perfect. I can do that. I can do that. Sarxus also provides APIs for other languages, much like raw HID, but properly multiplexed and handled. Awesome. Yeah, physical manual. I think, okay. You know, it's the more and more people come into the hobby, the more different types of people we will encounter. And so we can't assume that everyone can put together a keyboard, you know? we. we we can't assume that that's quote unquote common sense to your average Joe. So having a manual is great. Like, like, look at this. Look at this. It's not, it's not super complex, but it's a diagram, you know, like a picture paints a thousand words, you know, like that song, like this is really all that's needed. I think this is super helpful. Like, like a couple of companies have been like, oh yeah, go to this website to grab the instructions, you know, but that's cool and all, but then again, if you're not too involved, you're not gonna know. Is this black or green says Nvesa? This is black, this is a blackboard. Black Sunsetter, which is why I'm using white on black keycaps. All right, we got one out. All right, all the gaskets on top. All right, on the bottom, let's put the gaskets on top. decent blue set. I forget who who designed GMK Hydro. Was it J Chan of Keyclack? I feel like that's the last place that I saw it. Okay. All right, let's put this together. Let's put this together. I was hoping that there would be some kind of case foam in here, but they did not include any case foam, so this is it. Okay, I do notice that the plate like I noticed it in the very beginning that it was a bit curved. It still seems to be doing that right now. So we just need to make sure we apply enough pressure to keep it closed. There we go. All right, there it is. Yeah, let's go put some Echo keycaps on it. Echo keycaps after we put away these screws. The global, current global capitalism is based on just in time for almost everything with very little in the way of contingencies. So any major shortages causes cascades in all industries. Oh, I feel that flex. That's a lot of flex on the board. Let's 
It's a very shiny plate. I I know. It was all a big mistake. Never meant to miss the date. I was caught up with my friends. I forgot that we had drinks. It's actually looking like a very sharp board. And there we go. There we go, guys. Let's clean this up a bit. The bad thing about Dice Hub is that the black is never too dark. Yeah. But guess what? This is this is not dice up. This is double shot. This is double shot PBT. Double shot PBT from Echo. Not the best stuff. Definitely not the best. Like you can tell just from looking at the legend, it's like it's 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 not very good. But now I'm very curious on like how it feels. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. Okay, let's do a typing test. Let's do a typing test just to see how it goes. Man, that's a, I can hear that weight. This weight here, guys, this thing's moving every time I shake the board. I think what I need to do is tape that down. Because I can hear it rattle, which sucks. If it wasn't for the weird blocker, you would have joined. Yeah, that's really weird, because that makes it so that your um, mod here to the right of the spacebar can only be a 1U. But coincidentally, the PCB supports other switches there, so you probably have an option to change it in the future. All right, here we go. Let's pause the music. Music. Let's pause you. Let me grab a typings test. Oh, did you guys see that? Um, I'm so used to having escape this column be the end of the row. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but I immediately shifted like that. So I started typing weird things. So, huh? Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Here, let's do a typing test. Music is off. Let's turn off crisp. You guys will hear what this room sounds like without any of my treatment. You guys can probably hear my uh, computer whirring as, as well. But here we go. Okay, this is a brass plate. Gasket mounted keyboard. Alpacas are lubed and filmed. Um, spring swapped to, to 67G. Here it goes, here it goes. Oh, that's that's weird. I'm gonna shift it off to the left here. Um, feels good. Feels pretty good, actually. It's It's been a while since I've typed on a brass-plated board, but since this guy is 
gasket mounted, I can definitely feel that flex. Definitely not as flexy as other boards that I've typed on that are also gasket mounted, but I like it. I like how it feels. I'm not too impressed with the sound, however. It just feels, it doesn't, like I feel like this is closer to, it's, a li it's closer to the clack, but it's more in the middle of things. Okay, so boards either sa sound like a thocky board or like a clacky board. And I found, and I found that if you try to get in the middle, Oh, to me, it doesn't sound good. And I think that's where this board sits right now. Like, it feels good, but the sound isn't isn't all there. Like, it's, it's not a bad sound. It's just not a spectacular sound. Could just be the brass plate. I would agree with you on that. Yeah, this feels very much like a uh, kind of like SA, that kind of slipperiness. It's a thin PBT, so it may impact sound as well. I agree with you on that. Though I will have to say that the thinness isn't that thin. It's only marginally thinner than EPBT. Let's see, what else can I say about it? It's, um,. Yeah, it's a it's a very weird feel. So I'll I'll probably do some gaming with this just to try it out, but it's super slippery. Super slippery. Not sure how I like that. Like even compared to a ABS set. Like ABS tends to be more more slippery. Yeah. It's more slippery. Very interesting feel. Here, let's try another ABS set. Okay, so this is an ABS set that's been worn a lot. Like some of these keys are, are like actually shiny. This is a JTK set, and even this is slipperier. Okay, let's try another PBT set here. Let us compare that with, with ABS. Here, let's try my holy grail. <laughs> the grail. Here. So this is a Swag Keys Cat PBT. It's definitely rough. That's slippery. It's definitely even more slippery. Okay. Here, this is another PBT set. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say that it's a $35 set. You know, I'm not I'm not expecting much from it and because it's a $35 set, I think it's fine. It's fine. It's it's a fine key set. You just have to you know overlook any of the legending issues and and like the feel of it. Is it as slippery as Geek Arc? I don't have a Geek Arc set and last time I typed on one was like a while back, so I can't exactly remember. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, in terms of the board, in terms of the board, um, I actually like the gap. I like how big this gap is. It's because normally I don't like it when the arrow key is crunched up. The fact that the gap is so big makes me not worry about that. So yeah, I quite like that. Um, earlier I talked about how my hand would shift to the left because I'm used to having boards that terminate over here but now this board is slightly longer or wider so that's a bit annoying but nothing nothing bad um, a couple of people during the unboxing did say that they did not like the the design this is 
the Sunsetter. And a lot of people have said that it looks very similar to the Japanese imperial flag used during World War II when they were committing those atrocities. So a lot of people didn't like that, especially since it's on the PCB. But, you know, regardless how you feel about this, my, my issue with this weight is they've chosen to make the sun shiny because it's the sun, right? That's not bad. But if you shake it, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but you can actually hear it wobble up and down. So I think what I need to do is take apart the board and put tape there just to keep it in place because I can hear that shake a bit. You guys hear that? This is banging against the case itself. It's not banging against the PCB, so there's not going to be any issues in terms of shorts. So that's fine. That's fine. It's just a, maybe like a tolerance issue with the weight. Overall, I think it's a good board. Um, I mentioned during the unboxing that it had some issues with the anodization. Like even right now, I can see it. There's a vertical streak going down going down here. So the anodization isn't top notch, so to speak. So here we go. This is the Sunsetter R1. R2 just finished and people in chat were talking about an R3 potentially coming up. So if this is a kind of board that interests you, definitely check those out. And anyway, before I end the stream, I'll do one more typing sounds and we'll, we'll call it quits. There, redo, redo, redo. Here we go. Oh, see? Do you guys see what I'm doing here? I, I instinctively shifted to the left. See? See that? I have my pinky on the caps lock. It's so weird. Okay. Here it goes. There we go. All right, everyone, thanks for joining in. My next stream is tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. PST, in which we'll be covering all the mechanical keyboard group buys that at least I can find for the upcoming week. So if that's the kind of information, that's the kind of news that you guys like to hear, definitely tune in at 7.30 tomorrow. All right, everyone, hope you have a good rest of your Saturday, and I will catch you when I catch you. Goodbye, everyone.